welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to use the Evazar London colored pencils in Matchstick Mouse, a springtime coloring book by Morgan O'Brien. And the page that I picked out for us to color today is this one here. With the mouse hanging up his her shell wind chime. <laughs> I think it's a really cute image. Um, I've already went through and picked out the colors um, that we're going to use. And it is, again, the Evazar London 130 set of colored pencils. Which I've had these for a little bit, but I had, <clears throat> had not shown them on the channel yet. So, I figured we would use them today. This is the swatch chart that came with the pencils. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to move this off to the side because I've already pulled everything and gotten everything sharpened and ready to go for us. So, I'm going to put this here. And these are the color combinations that I've chosen for the image. And we'll, we'll look at these more for each individual element as we are going to begin. So I will zoom you in and we'll get started. Let's see. There we go. All right. So the colors that I picked for the flowers are Regalia Purple, Amethyst, and Lilac. And then the other combination is French Pink, Peony Pink, and Pale Pink. And we'll start on those. So, let me grab those pencils. And I also have my Karen Dash Full Blender in case I feel like it needs needs that, um, which we may or may not use it, but it's there. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the purple combination, and I'm going to use the purple on the outside of these flowers in here. And we'll do the pink for the inside petals. And then on these two, I believe we'll do the pink on those as well. So we're gonna start with the, you're not gonna be able to see that, Regalia Purple. And I'm gonna start where it meets this other petal. With heavy, medium to heavy pressure and fade out. And the next color is going to be the amethyst. We'll go over what we did. And then fade that out a little, leaving a little room for our last color, <clears throat> which is <clears throat> the lilac. That will go over everything, blend all that together, and fill in the white space. And I'm going to take the Regalia Purple and go back in and add the shadow back along where this other petal is laying on top. Deepen that up a little. Just like that. Maybe I should zoom you in a little bit more. 
Okay, and we'll just repeat that on all these petals. <clears throat> How has everybody been doing? Hope everybody's doing good. We've been doing okay. Trying to get as much coloring in as I can get here recently because it had been a while since I actually had done much. I've actually got several buddy colors planned. Um, well that I'll be working on um, I'm excited about those this is the amethyst and of course Easter's right around the corner so not sure exactly what we'll be doing uh, other than spending time with with each other. So. These are a little bit dusty, but they are they are a good set of pencils. I do like these pencils. I'm just gonna take my eraser and try to get that where I went over the line a little. And then I'm going to go back in with <clears throat> the Regalia Purple on these other petals. Um, where the, the ones on top overlap. And fill that in and deepen that up. take our pink combination for the inside petals and that is the French pink, peony pink, and pale pink. And we're going to start with our French pink and go where um, around the center of the flower and then fade that out a little. And then the peony pink. And lastly, the pale pink over all of that.
forgot to pick out was a combination for the very center of the flower. So give me one moment while I take a look at the swatch chart. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. And pick out something here. I think we will do Tuscan yellow and, or actually no, daffodil yellow and buttermilk. Yeah. Daffodil yellow and buttermilk. And I'll give these two just a really quick sharpen. Apologize. Daffodil yellow and buttermilk. So we'll take our daffodil and go around the outside of the center. It's a very small area, so it might not show very much contrast there. And we we'll took the uh, buttermilk and filled the rest of it in. But now I'm taking the daffodil around again, see if I can get any more get that on the edge to deepen up. If not, it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's okay. All right. So we're going to move up to this flower here and do the same thing that we did on the last one. Okay. Regalia purple. I may show you how I'm going to do a few of these and then go off and finish finish that up. Um, so hopefully you're not getting too bored. Um, but so I would like to finish this page in the one video today. Okay, amethyst. And then lilac. I also thought that instead of um, going off camera and finishing um, certain areas um, that maybe I could try to um, show you a couple and then for the rest of it, the rest of me calling whatever that item is um, I could speed that up and set it to music if that's something that you would be interested in seeing please leave me a comment down below I would be happy to give that a try in the future. That way you can actually watch as I'm doing it, but it'll be sped up and not so drawn out. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to use our French pink and Go around these circles in the center. And 
there's not a lot of room here. So, I'm just gonna do my best to make things fit. This is the pale pink. And then for these little dots, I'm just going to go in with the daffodil yellow and fill those in. And I may go over that with um, a glitter gel pen later, like the clear jelly roll stardust. Okay, so now we'll move on to the other side. This little flower up here. We're just gonna use our pink combination for that one. Um, but first let's do the center. So we'll take our daffodil yellow and go around the outside edge. And then fill that in with the but buttermilk. Now we'll take our French pink, go around that, and fade that out. Go over top of that with our peony pink. And lastly, our pill pink. French pink. We're going to move on to this flower here. Put the French pink in the center. And kind of fade it out a little onto the petals. <clears throat> and then the peony. Go over that and fade that out. And lastly, the pale pink. Next, we are going to grab the Regalia Purple, and I'm just going to go around here, kind of like that. And then kind of add a little fuzzy line along the edge of that. Alright, I'll go over that with the amethyst. And lastly, the lilac.
this one here. Um, we're gonna do just in the pink combination as well. Okay, so that's French pink. And fade that towards the end of the petal. Next is going to be Peony. And lastly is going to be the Pearl Pink. And we'll just fill all of this in. Blend it all together. All right. Next, we'll do the center of that. But again, with the Daffodil yellow along the outside. And then buttermilk over all of it. I may grab a darker yellow to see if we can get a little bit more contrast there. But anyway, and then I think this right in here, I'm actually going to color that in with the pink combination. Um, give me just one moment though. I will be right back. Sorry guys. Okay, so we're gonna color this in with our pink combination. And I think, even though it looks a little different, I'll do it in the same manner I did these, which would be the darkest color in the center and fading out into the lighter color. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with our French pink, I'm just going to start in the center with that and then fade out from that and go over that with the peony pink. Go over it and fade it out towards the edge. And then lastly, go over all of it with the pale pink. And this is probably supposed to be some sort of greenery, but that's okay. I'm not going to um, worry with that, but I feel like it needs a little bit more of the pink on this side. So that's why I decided to do it this way. And I apologize if you can hear background noise. All right, so there is that. All right. So next, I think we will do a couple of the leaves and then I'll go off camera and finish the rest of the leaves up because I'm gonna do them all pretty much the same on this one. Um, but, um, so for the leaves, I've picked this combination here, the aloe vera, spring green, pistachio green, and lime green. Just going to grab those. Okay. Aloe vera, spring, pistachio, and lime. All right, so these are our colors here. All right, and slide this up a little. 
I'll start with the leaf that has the ladybug sitting on it. And I'm going to go in with the aloe, aloe vera. And I'm going to put, which is our darkest color. And I'm going to put that where the flower is sitting kind of on the leaf or overlapping the leaf. And, and I'm going to fade that down. But I'm also going to put a little bit under the ladybug as well. Just like that. And then next is going to be spring green. I'm going to just go over top of that, extend it, and fade it down. Do the same thing with our pistachio. And lastly, <clears throat> our lime green. We'll fill everything in. Blend everything out, just like that. So I'm gonna use these colors on all, all of the leaves. And um, the only thing I'm gonna vary is I'm gonna start on each one with my darkest color wherever anything overlaps it. So on like this one, it would be along here and here and down. And then on this one, it would be like right in here, fading out this way. And this one, it would be at the top, fading towards the bottom. So basically like that for all the rest of the leaves. And I'm going to go off camera, get all of those done, and then I'll be back to move on to the next part. See you in a minute. Okay, I am back. Um, now I did leave some of these areas in here undone. Um... And that is because I'm going to use the same colors on those areas as I am on the bushes down here. Just to bring the, this color combination up as well. So, And I did notice, let me zoom you in a little bit, when I was doing these leaves, um, that I kept looking at these areas and these shapes trying to figure out what was going, what that was on the image. And I finally realized that... It was um, a vine wrapping around this tree. So I went ahead and did that while I was thinking about it. Um, but all I did was I used the same colors as the leaves. And I, I used my darker colors along the outside. Um, along these outside edges here. And then a little bit where anything overlaps it. And then went over it and faded <clears throat> in towards the middle with the lighter colors. I hope that makes sense the way I'm saying that. But anyway, so that's all I did for the vine. So now we'll move on. We'll come down here and do part of these bushes. And then I'll go off and do the rest of all of that off camera. I think what I'll do is I'll show you this up in here. And then a couple little pieces of the bushes. And then... I'll do the rest off camera again. Um, <clears throat> so the colors that I chose for the bushes are sap green, moss green, apple green, and pistachio green. So I'm gonna use this sap green. Just the book a little bit. And I'm going to go in this section here, and I'm going to put the sap green where anything overlaps this little area here. And then fade in the same on this little part. And then moss green. 
We'll go over that. Fade that out. Apple green. And lastly, it <clears throat> pistachio green. All right. And of course, as always, if you don't think your shadows are deep enough, you can always go back in with your darkest color and deepen that up. Back over those areas and deepen that. To get a little bit more contrast in there. Just like that. I'll do this one right here. And then we'll do the bushes. And I'll complete it off camera. I just messed that up. <laughs> Not really, but <clears throat> it was supposed to be sap green and that was moss I just put down. So now I'm taking the sap green and going along the very edge and I'll go back over it with the moss. Then the apple. And then the pistachio. Why sometimes it's not always good to hold them in your hand <laughs> like I do because I do that a lot I'll get a mix get them mixed around in the wrong order okay this is the sap green I'm trying to deepen up the shadow just a little bit more okay now we will move down to our bushes down here and it's basically gonna be pretty much done in the same way. Um, I'm going to take my sap green and anywhere where something is overlapping, I'm going to put some of the sap green down. Barely heavy pressure, medium to heavy. And then I'm going to fade that out. And like here, there's another, some more lines. So I'm going to go behind that and then fade that out. Just like that and then kind of a little tiny bit along this leaf here this leaf is hanging over okay just like that and then I'll go over top of all of that with the moss green and fade it out in the apple And lastly, um, over all of it with the pistachio. Just like that. Now this little section down here, I'm gonna take my sap green and I'm going to go along the edge of the image here. Excuse me, along that border. And then fade up. And then again, go around anywhere where there's any more lines like this. And fade out from here. Okay, and then along around Worm's, Worm's head there, a little bit. And fade out. And go over that with moss. And then apple. And 
And lastly, the pistachio. just like that so and that's how I'm going to do the rest of this where it looks like bushes so I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to finish finish all this and as well, let me zoom you back out for a minute as well as anywhere up in here that I left I'm going to I'm going to go off camera and do in this way with this color combination. And I'll come back and then that part will be done and we'll move on to our next part. I'll see you in a minute. All right. I'm back and I've got all of the bushes and the rest of the leaves done. So this is what it's looking like so far. And now I think we will zoom back in. We'll do worm. We'll do a couple of the shells and a branch here and a piece of the tree and then I'll go off camera to do, finish all that up and then we'll come back and do mouse and whatever else we have left so let me zoom you back in and we'll get started with worm and there we go all right so the colors that I have chosen for worm are right here light coral light salmon and peaches and cream so i will find those real quick okay we got those together light oops sorry light coral light salmon and peaches and cream so I'm going to take the light coral, which is the darkest color, and we will go along here under his face a little bit, along this side and down with medium to heavy pressure, and we'll fade that out, and we'll go along here. Like that again and do the same medium to heavy pressure and fade up and I apologize if you hear my son in the background he's playing and having himself a blast so and then along the underside there and fade down just like that next we'll take light salmon Go over top of that and fade it out. Just like that. And lastly, our peaches and cream. We'll go over all of it, blend it all together. Just like that, but I think I'm gonna grab, excuse me, I think I'm gonna grab this coral that I already had pulled anyway for the shells and I'm gonna deepen up the shadows on Worm a little bit because it doesn't seem to have quite the contrast that I was hoping for. So again, along those areas where we put our darkest color, I'm just gonna go over those with this coral and deepen that up a bit. side and along 
this edge. And it gives him a little bit more contrast. And um, I think I'm going to take this coral over these lines the artist drew in as well. Just like that. All right. So we have worm. So now we'll move on to our shells. We'll do a couple of these. So the colors that I chose for the shells are coral, light coral, and ivory. So we'll take the coral color and we'll go along in here a little and then a little bit down where these lines are the artist drew in kind of like that okay and we'll go over top of that with our light coral and fade out And then we'll go over top of everything with the ivory and finish filling that in. Just like that. And then, so that's how I'll do these that are shaped like that. And then for this one here, the little twisty, um, I'm going to put this coral right in here and then try to go along these little lines. This will be a little tricky because it is so small. This is the light coral. I'm just trying to go over that as best I can and then go over all of it with the ivory. Just like that. All right, so that's that part. And now I think we'll do the this little branch here and then we'll do part of the tree and I'll do the rest of everything off camera. So we're gonna go in with, um, here we go. Okay, we're going to use mocha, bark, and, and butternut for our tree. And for anywhere where we want a deeper shadow, we will use um, dark chocolate. Alright, so we're going to take this mocha. Actually, first, change that. I'm going to take the butternut. And I'm just going to do a really light base layer over all of this branch. Super light, barely touching the page, just to get a nice little even base layer of that lighter color on there. And then we'll take the mocha and we're going to go along the top and fade in towards the middle and along the bottom and fade up towards the middle to try to give this a more rounded look as if it was actually was a stick. So do that on each one of these little sections. And the string, I'm probably gonna end up using a gel pen for that. So, okay. And then along the edge, I'm going to add a little bit of this mocha and fade in. All right. So just like that. And then um, I'm going to take the bark, go over that, and fade out. There's not a lot of room on this little section, but I think we can work with it. 
Okay, and lastly, our butternut. Fill that in. Okay. And there's our branch. So we'll move back. Move back down here and do um, do our little tree branch. Or yeah, we'll do our tree. Okay, so do a nice base layer again of the butternut. Just like that. And then we'll take our mocha. And go along this edge with heavy pressure and fade in. like that and we'll go along where anything overlaps as well and give it more of a shadow which we'll probably go back in with our dark chocolate and darken that up as well as trying to uh, try to give it a little more texture all right we'll go over what we just laid down with bark And fade that out. Okay. And lastly, butternut over everything. I'm just using light pressure here. I don't want to completely burnish because I'm going to go back in with um, this dark chocolate to darken things up. So we want we want Mouse to stand out from the tree. We don't want him to blend her to blend in with this tree. So and actually that was part of the tree there, I believe. So. We don't want mouse to completely blend in with the tree. So we're going to go back over that with that a little bit. Anyway, we're gonna go and add a deeper shadow in with this dark chocolate. Along the outside edge. And where anything overlaps. And then around this leaf a little bit, since it's up against the tree. And we'll take this dark chocolate, and we'll also go over the lines the artist drew in to give it a little bit of texture. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to zoom out real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to finish all the rest of the tree, which is up in here. And there's a tree limb going over this way. And you can see a little bit here. I'm going to finish all that in the same manner. 
and as well as these sticks here. And I'm gonna finish the rest of the shells the same way we did those. And then I will be back and we'll finish mouse and all the embellishments as well as the background and our little ladybug. I will be right back. All right, I am back. I've gotten all of the tree done and the branches and seashells. Um, now I did kind of mess up and if you can see here, I guess I'll zoom you in. Over here on this leaf was supposed to be a, a little bug. It was a little bug. And I ended up accidentally coloring it like the tree, but that's okay. So you can do your bug like the tree or you can do your bug whatever color combination you wanna do. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do this little ladybug over here. And we are going to use Rose red and scarlet red. Now, I'm not sure how much of definition we're going to get with this. Probably not much. Probably not much contrast. Um, but we'll do our best here. So, um, we're going to take this rose red and start at the bottom of the ladybug with heavy pressure and then fade up towards the top. Give me just one second, guys. Okay, I'm sorry about that. My son needed me for just a second. Um, but okay, so we took our rose red and we started at the base and, and faded upwards. Now we're gonna take our scarlet red and we're gonna go over the top of that and blend these two colors together. And I think I'm gonna use, hang on one second, guys. Um. Where's my eraser? There it is. I ran out of the line just a little bit. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to use a little bit of white up at the very top to try to lighten that up. So that hopefully we'll get a little bit more of a of a contrast there and then I'll take my eraser and where the little black dots are I'm just going to touch the eraser to it and that way the white is not there but that way hopefully that gave us a little bit more a little bit more contrast I'm going to take this rose red and go back along this edge here and try to deepen that up as well so there's that um okay and then we have up here at the top we have some little berries we're also going to use these two colors for the berries so i'm going to take my rose red and we are going to go around the outside edge of the berry with heavy pressure on each one of these. And then we're gonna fill the rest of it in with our scarlet red, lightly, kinda lightly. And then we are going to take our white and go over that just in the center of these. And what we'll also do is we'll use a white gel pen and add some highlights to it. But we're gonna take our rose red again and go back around the outside edge now that we've used the white. To try to deepen up the edge, the outside edge, just like that. Okay, and once we're all done with everything, we'll come in with our white gel pen and we'll add a highlight to the berries and probably to the ladybug as well. So now I'm gonna have to zoom you back out just a little so you can see all the mouse. We're gonna do mouse now. And um, first we'll do mouse's hat. And for that, we're gonna use the same purples that we used on the flowers, but we are also going to add white 
into that as well. So right now I'm just cleaning off my white pencil and making sure I get all the red off of there. So we don't want to mix red in with our purple. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to use the Regalia purple again. And I'm going to go along here and fade down. And I'm going to add a little of this also along where Mouse's head is. Okay, just like that. And then we'll go over that with our amethyst. And lastly, with our lilac over everything. And then we will take, we'll take our white and we'll go over this edge over here just along the outside edge, just to lighten the lightest color up a little bit more. Give that a little bit more um, contrast. There, like that. And I'm gonna go over this black and lift the white that transferred to the black line. Work. And then I'm gonna take my Regalia purple and go along the edge of this again to deepen up our darkest color. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna also take the regalia and I'm gonna go along the edge, the brim of the hat and fade up. And along the outside edge and fade in and along here and fade in towards the middle Put some under the ear where the ear overlaps, and then a little bit along, just a tiny bit along the top where the ear is overlapping. Tiny, tiny bit, and along in here. Okay, just like that. Next, we'll go over everything we just put down with our amethyst. All right, and then lastly, over top of all of it with the lilac. And then, then, once we get this all filled in, now we'll take our white and go over um, our lightest, where, our, where we put our lightest color. I cannot talk today, words are hard. Okay. Let's see. Just like that. 
And again, if you run over the black lines, you can always take an eraser to that and lift that white. Um, just like that. take my regalia and clean up some of these um, shadow areas just a little okay. where we might have lightened it a little too much okay Pretty content with how that looks. Alright. So next we are going to color mouse in. And I will tell you ahead of time, I'm not the best at doing fur, but we're gonna give it a whirl anyway. So the colors that I chose for mouse are um, hazelnut, caramel, and camel. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to take the camel and I'm going to give Mouse a light base layer all over. with the camel. Okay. Just really light. It's barely, barely touching the paper. Let me make sure that you can see good what I'm doing. like that. Now these areas here where the artist did not draw any um, fur lines, I usually try to make those areas lighter than the rest of mouse. So that, that's probably what we'll do. Um, so now I'm going to take my hazelnut and I'm going to go in the direction of the lines that the artist drew and I'm going to try to flick some lines in there. Doesn't have to match up per se with the lines the artist drew up, just as long as it's in the same direction. That's all I try to go for, just like that. And then on top of that, we're gonna do it, the same thing again with caramel. And we're just gonna try to Put some of that in there. And lastly, with our camel. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same on his, on her ear going to take my hazelnut, but this, there's no fur lines here, so I'm just going to flick, do some little flicking motion towards the, towards the tip of the ear, just like that, and then I'm going to go in with caramel, 
and do the same. And when you're doing this, it can can be helpful to every so many times to try to turn your pencil so that um, you're using a sharp tip. Um, and that can be helpful because you always do, when you're trying to do fur, you want a um, sharp pencil. That definitely helps. Again, this way with the hazelnut and the caramel, 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 however you say it, <laughs> and camel. I always say caramel, but this up where it went over that line a little bit. Alright, so now we're going to move down to his bod her body and we're going to take the hazelnut. Again, you want to flick in the direction of the fur. The artist is really good about drawing in some fur lines for you to help you try to uh, figure out and know which direction the fur would be going. So, the matchstick mouse books I usually do flick in or try to flick in the fur even though like I said I know I'm not the best at doing fur so but I, I give it a try I give it a try <laughs> and um, yeah so And my cat's going to start talking to you again today. All right, and we're going to do this part here. Okay, give me just one second. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm back. So now we're going to go, oh, well, actually, we forgot. Well, I forgot her arm. And this side over here, so I'm just going to flick that in real quick. And then we'll move on to our next color. Yeah. In just a second. And then, oops, sorry, I don't know why I said that. But anyway, caramel is our next color. So we're just going to go over that with the caramel and flick that in. And you can, of course, leave some of the white of the paper or the lighter color showing through for more, like, variation or, I don't know, to help with the texture to make the fur look more like fur. All right, and then I'm going to go in over everything with the camel. So much noise today. All the dogs in the neighborhood want to bark like crazy. <laughs> My cat wants to talk too. Alright, so there is that. So now I think for let me see something real quick. Hmm. Okay. I think for the rest of this, I'm going to go over everything really lightly with the camel. really lightly with the camel and then we'll take our butternut that we used earlier and put a little shading in and 
around there. Where the hat overlaps a little bit around here. Like that, and then there, and then her mouth, put a little bit where the arm. Is going over the stomach. Okay, and then I think what we're gonna do for that is we are going to take, make sure that our white is clean and does not have any purple left on there. And then we're just gonna go over this all with the white to lighten that up and blend that in. Just in that area where we flicked in our fur, we don't want to go over that with the white. Okay, so just in that area. And then for Mouse's nose, I have. I have Payne's Gray, Window Gray, and Gray Cloud. So I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray and I'm gonna go along these edge of Mouse's nose. Okay, and kind of fade it in. And then I'm gonna take my Window Gray, go over that, and fade out. And lastly, go over all of it with our Gray Cloud and blend everything together. Just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna take a little bit of that pale pink from earlier, and I'm gonna put that right inside where Mouse's mouth is open. Okay, and then for Mouse's ear and tail and paws, or hands, whatever you wanna call it, um, we're going to use our coral, light coral, white salmon, and peaches and cream again. So I'm going to take the coral along the bottom side of the tail and I'm going to put a heavier layer down and fade that up. All, just all along the bottom of it. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to go over that with the light coral. And then light salmon. And lastly, the peaches and cream over all of it. that okay and then when it comes to mouse's ear I'm gonna take this coral right along here and all along here and then I'm gonna fade that out like that okay and then we're gonna take the white coral and we're gonna go over it and we're, then we'll extend it a little and fade that one out as well. And then white salmon. And lastly, 
our peaches and cream yeah. over all of it. And if you think that that's too dark or too bright or whatever, you could always take white over top of all of that. And that will lighten that up. Okay, so you just always want to make sure when you go to use your white pencil that you have rubbed it off, rubbed it onto a scratch piece of paper to make sure that you don't have any other color on there because if you do, it will mix those colors together. So there we go. Oops. Got a little too far in. I was just trying to lift the color off the, lift that white off the black. That's <laughs> line work. And I went a little too far. Okay. It's okay. That can be fixed. Just like that. There we go. All right. And now we'll do the same for her paws. We'll take the coral right here where it meets the fur. Maybe do a little along the bottom edge of each of the fingers. Well, you know, toes or whatever. Just like that. We'll go over that with the light coral. Fade it out. And then our white salmon. And then lastly, the peaches and cream. Okay, just like that. And I am going to take my white. I'm gonna give it a real quick sharpen because it actually is pretty bright. And then I'm going to go over the paws with this white and try to lighten that up a little bit and blend that in. Just like that. Give me just a second. Okay, guys. I'm I apologize again. Um but yeah, I'm just taking the white over the paws to lighten that up a little bit. And there we go. So now all we have left, let's zoom out a little bit. That might have been a little too much. Let's make sure you can see everything, but all right. So all we have left now is our background, the strings, and the pearls. Um, and any embellishments like the white gel pen so white gel pen details so um what I'm going to do for these pearls is I have picked out two different colors of liquid pearl I have a yellow and an actual white pearl color so that's what we're going to use for those for the string I think I'm going to just use these stickles here that's in this like tan copper, brown, gold, whatever color you want to call that. Um, <laughs> for that, that's for the strings. And then, um, I think we're going to go over top of the ladybug and the berries with a little bit of the clear stickles. Um, yeah, so... We're going to do that. Oh, and the yellow liquid pearl, I'm also going to put this on top of the yellow centers of the flowers. Just to give it a little something extra. You don't have to do this, of course. It's just something I decided at the last minute to do. So, I'm just going to put a little dot on each one of these dots. Just like that. And on this one, I apologize if you hear my neighbor. Um, and then up here at the top, I'm going to put a dot of this here. Mm, I'm not sure if I really want to put it on that one or not because that is a pretty big center. 
Um, so I think we'll wait for just a minute and let me think about it and decide. So we'll come over here. Let me zoom you in. So hopefully maybe you can see a little better. Should have done that sooner. So on this one, I'm gonna put the yellow. That one will be the white. And then I'm gonna come down here and put the yellow. We'll have the white there and the yellow here. And we'll put more white on that. I see. And then yellow here. Yellow and white there. And then we'll put the yellow here and here. Okay. And then let's see. Now we're going to move on to this white pearl color. See if it actually has a color name on them. Mm, mine do not. But mine came in the three packs. And then I don't know about the liquid pearl, but I know with the stickles, when you get them in the three packs, they don't tend to have color names on them. So, all right, we're just going to fill in the rest of these that we left empty. And the liquid pearl and the stickles, they do take a while to dry. So when I use these, I tend to um, leave my book open, usually overnight. I'll leave it open just to be safe that everything dried okay and everything. So we're going to try the stickles on this rope. Um, I may end up regretting it. We'll see. And of course, you don't have to use this at home. You can use colored pencil or marker, gel pen, or whatever it is you choose to use. I just thought this might add a little something extra. And you can never have too much sparkle or glitter on your page. So here we go. I'm trying to get this. I think mine's running a little bit low. I have had these for a little while. So. And I'm just tracing over the line with the stickles. Guys, let me try to bring it out just a tiny bit more so you can see all of what I'm doing. Okay. Continue right here. And there we go. Just like that. Oh, I was not thinking. <laughs> I should have done the background first. That's okay. Um, we'll just have to let it dry and come back once it's dry and do the background. Okay, let's see. All right. Now with this clear stickles, this over here, zoom it in a bit. Okay, I'm just going to go over top of these berries. Maybe. Yeah, 
just like that and just squeeze a little on top of the berry so you can see the color through there but when it dries it'll be sparkly and then we will do the same thing with our ladybug Use a little bit of this on the ladybug so that she's nice and sparkly. Okay, and again, I'm going to pause here while I let this start to dry so that we can come back and do our background. See you shortly. Okay, so I think that the stickles and the liquid pearl have dried enough that we can go ahead and do the background. Um, what I plan on using today for the background are the Jane Davenport Palette Pastel. This is the mineral eye set. And the color that I plan on using is this blue right here, the second one on the second row. And I'm just gonna apply it with these cheap um, eyeshadow applicators that I got a long time ago off of Amazon. It came in a little jar like this and I think they were only like three something for the jar and it had um, well, it doesn't say how many it had but it had quite a few as you can see I still have a lot in there that haven't been used yet so um, they do last me a long time but all right, so we'll get started. I'm gonna try to zoom you in a little bit so that you can see pretty much everything, hopefully. All right, so what I do is real simple. Um, I just take and rub the eyeshadow applicator on the color that I want. And this set here, the mineral eye set, they're a little bit uh, pearlescent, if you can see that shimmer and shine. Um, but okay, so just gonna start applying this to the page in circular motions, just like that. Okay. Use my brush to dust off any excess that might be there. Okay. And then I'll start down here by worm. I enjoy these palette pastels a lot, and I'll probably do a video, a coloring on a budget video or something, showing these a little bit closer. Um, I do have a couple of the sets. Um, I don't have them all, but I have a couple of them, and I really like them. They're fun to use. They're easy to use, and... Um, they make a really good, quick, easy, pretty background. So. <clears throat> it really 
Really probably would have been a better idea to dim this before applying the stickles and the liquid pearl, but, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with doing this part last. And sometimes, depending on what I'm using for my background, sometimes I will do my background first before I do anything else on the page. So, just depends, really, on what I plan on using for it. A lot of times, if I'm going to use gel crayons or inks or any of that kind of thing, I'll do that first. But you can certainly still do it last. All right. So there is that. And I think, let's see here. Wipe away any dust. I think I'm gonna take my, um, my electric eraser. Mine has a really small, um, mine has the two different size um, erasers. And I have the really tiny one in here now that's similar to a Tombow Mono Zero. But I'm just going to take this and erase some little dots kind of all over the page just to give it a little something else in the background. I think my eraser must have had something on it. Which you certainly don't have to do this, but every once in a while I'll do something similar to this to my page. Just gives it a little, little something. And with this, you can make different size circles depending on how long you touch it to the spot. If you do that and you relate <clears throat> if you do this and then you decide you don't like it you can always go back it over it with your pastel and lay your pastel back down and cover it up but I think I like how that looks so just going to leave it like that, although I do see a place I believe I missed a while ago that could use a little bit more blue. There we go. And maybe a dot or two. There we go. All right, so that may not even be noticeable on camera. Um, I'm not sure, but anyway. There's our finished image. Try to zoom you out so you can see the full image. I hope you've enjoyed <clears throat> working on this image with me today. Um, if you did, if you like this video or videos like these, please give me a thumbs up. It really, really helps out the channel. And if you have not done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a comment down below. Leave me a comment about this page or things you would like to see on the channel or anything else. If you, if you would like to do a buddy color with me, leave that down in the comment section. I love doing buddy colors and I am always more than willing to do one. Um... But until next time, stay safe and happy coloring. Bye, guys.